One more thing about color is understanding that what we see reflected from the surface, we do not see in a vacuum. So say like Right now I've got a blue coffee mug on my desk and then my desk is kind of a lighter ash color. It's, it's wood. And so the coffee mug, uh, the blueness of it is affected by the surrounding color of the wood. Or if you hold your hand up in front of you, you've got your flesh tone, whatever that may be. But then you're also seeing that against whatever the background is. We never see any color in total isolation. And because of that, color has an action on itself. And one of the things that we do need to understand is the after image. And the after image is what makes the it and 12 hue system the most practical of all the subtractive systems. There are other systems of color. There's Goethe, there's Holtzel, there's Munsell, there's Ostwald. Uh, the Itten one is the most practical because it is the one that closely seems to resemble or reflect actuality. It reflects reality. So it is trustworthy. Itten was a teacher at the Bauhaus School and a crony of Joseph Albers and was a color theorist and teacher and devising the systematic arrangement of color into the 12 hues with the three primaries, the three secondaries, the three tertiaries, a perceptual verification and the arrangement of color uh, in that uh, system be due to the after image, which is a visual phenomenon. It's a visual effect. To understand what the after image is, we're going to experience it. What I'd like you to do is look at the black circle for several seconds. And what you should be seeing is in the upper left, it's sort of green. In the upper right, it's sort of violet in color. In the lower left, it's sort of orangey. And in the lower, lower right, it should be kind of pink. You've just experienced the after image. And that is a perceptual phenomenon that happens because of how your visual system works. In your retina, you have rods and cones. Your cone cells measure the wavelengths that come in. Cone cells fire off of three different sets of wavelengths, red, green, and blue. And so if you're looking at something that's red, the red receptors are going to be fatigued, much as if uh, you're going to the gym, you work out and start fatiguing your muscles with the effort. And it takes some time for the muscles to kind of come back into full capability. The same thing happens here in your eye, so that if you're getting a lot of red stimulation, those cells that are receiving the red are going to fatigue and the result is that you will see the opposite of red, which is green, which happens to be a combination of yellow and blue, the other two primaries. So understanding this, if you're looking at this and then you transfer your eye over here, you're going to see green as a after image on the gray. And if you're uh, looking at the yellow, you're going to see a little bit of violet as an after image on the gray. The reason this is on gray, first of all, gray is, um, well, th this particular gray has no after image because it has no chroma. And it is halfway between white and black, so you can't see it any lighter than it is, and you can't see it any darker than it is. So after image doesn't happen with a mid-value gray, kind of a middle gray. The after image of black is white, the after image of white is black. If you have looked at the sun directly and you look away and you have this big kind of black blob in your vision for a while, that's an after image. Or if somebody has taken a flash photo, you have the, the resulting black blob in your vision for a few minutes, that's after image. So the thing to understand is that no matter what color we're looking at, unless it's gray, all colors have an after image and those after images will be imposed on the colors that are around them affecting how we see color.